Hi guys, welcome back to my channel and today I'll be doing an up-to-date review on this 2014 Ford KA or Ford car or however you want to call it. Now first off I just want to give a shout out to the owner of this car who's let me review it and in fact the owner of this car actually runs her own little business called Gabrielle Rushton Beauty. So you know if you're a girl or guy and want some lash extensions, some new nails, some uh, tidying up your eyebrows, a spray tan, she does it all. So it'd be greatly appreciated if you could go check out her page. I'll leave all the links in the description box below. So let's kick off the review then, and you're only probably watching this because you want to know how cheap this car is to run. Well, the car tax is only £30 per year, and it only costs around £30 to fill up. Also, the KA only has around 68 brake horsepower, so yeah, you guessed it, insurance isn't going to be that expensive either. But although it's a cheap car to run, it's not a cheap car to buy. Similar cars to these are selling for around three to four grand on Auto Trader, and that's also the same price of a 13 slash 14 Reg Ford Fiesta or Vauxhall Corsa. And for them, you do get like a lever wrapped steering wheel and obviously you do get more power. The first generation KAs were first brought out back in 1996. And also in that same time frame, the Street KA also came out as well with that rather strange roof mechanism where you had to unlatch the roof and take the boot up and it was just it was just weird nonetheless it actually took them 12 whole years to bring out this second generation ford ka yes take that in for a second 12 whole years car sales clearly must have been a massive success and now we move towards the front of the ford ka and obviously it looks way better than its main competitor the fiat 500 however the front grille does like someone's trying to pout their lips and try to do the duck lips, if you know what I mean. And also the fog lights um, seem like they're supposed to be here, but it's just been covered up with this horrendous plastic piece. Besides, the particular model I've got in this review is the KA Edge, and it's based off the same chassis as the good old Italian Feet 500. And we all know how I feel about that car. The KA is only offered with a little tiny 1.2 litre petrol engine, even though I did hear somewhere that they made a diesel for it, which seems to have been discontinued. So if anyone has a second generation Ford KA diesel, make yourself known in the comments section down below. And now let's move on to the interior of the Ford KA. And first impressions, the seat in position is quite high compared to other cars. And the layout of it is very similar to the Fiat 500, which is no surprise at all. On to something that's quite disappointing in the Ford KA, and that is the fact you barely get any storage space within this whole cabin. You only have pretty much one cup holder and the side pockets are pretty small. You probably won't get much in there. And side note, you only get two airbags as standard in this car you actually have to pay for four airbags that that just should not be an option airbags should never be an option to pay for now i want to discuss about the rear seats and normally i would do this section in sat in the back however there's um, barely any space and i'd probably have to remove my head of some sort or do something um there's uh, there's some leg room however for taller passengers they will struggle there's barely any head space or head room uh, for you it just really depends on the type of passenger you have but overall as an interior it's not that shabby or dull you do get some colorful seats and a colorful dash so it does contribute to that um, whole ambience that you get but uh, it's it's considerably better than the Fiat 500 so it's good in my books regardless Okay, and now let's go for a little drive in the Ford KA and um, I've been getting some comments from you guys saying you don't like it when I use the words um, cool and nice so for future reviews I will try refrain from using them words also I have been receiving some requests outside of my um, little bubble to come review people's other people's cars so yeah Alex I will get back to you and come review your BMW 320d one day I just uh, you just live quite far away so that will happen one day don't worry but essentially what does this car feel like to drive well it feels like a um, jacked up a Citroen C1 or Peugeot 107 that has better handling 
uh, probably more comfort and more tech essentially but I'm guessing a combination of all of those does make it great for you know town driving and city driving due to the fact that the steering is quite light in this car and um, I do feel like if I did tug on it on the motorway at high speed I will uh, essentially flip over also this car does have massive massive side mirrors there's so much you can see out of them and also the visibility is also great so it's very very hard to actually bump this car into something because you can literally see everything the indicator stalks on the Ford KA as well they're not the ones in the Ford Fiesta so you will find different indicator stalks in there surprise because I thought Ford will uh, try save money on that standpoint but they haven't Funnily enough, this car is quite popular. I've literally got the same car following me as well. What are the chances? Exactly the same. What I mean by exactly the same, it is literally exactly the same. The KA Edge model as well. Does get up to speed quite well, but after 3000 RPM, it does struggle quite a bit. Does lack the power. You do notice the uh, 68 brake horsepower that it had. Another thing I didn't mention is that the pedals in this car are very, very small. So people with bigger feet, I could imagine they're gonna struggle a lot changing gear, braking, accelerating. But essentially I do love the fact that this car is just really small, it just fits everywhere. And turning around, reversing, doing anything you want, it's just so much more easier. The ride and suspension in this car, it's quite bouncy, it's quite comfortable, I've probably mentioned that. Uh, I, I did a review on a Giulietta and the suspension, I could tell the difference. That was quite relatively stiff than to this one. But I would recommend this car solely on the basis of the fact that you do all your driving in a town or a city as it will 100% struggle on the motorway or dual carriageways if you go to your 9 to 5 job uh, on there. I'm sure it can <laughs> keep up with the uh, motorway speeds and dual carriageway speeds but you will incur more maintenance costs as you are essentially maxing out the car. So there you go guys, to conclude this review it's basically like a shrunken down Ford Fiesta that's perfect for city daily driving or even better if you're a university student to be honest. Still it's quite a stylish car I must say and if you do prefer the Fiat 500 over this car then I think you need to uh, double check your choice on that because that car is unbearable to look at. Well that's it from me, thank you guys for watching, I'll see you next time. Oh, we just overtook me. What a rebel. Oh, that's bad. The, the KA that was exactly the same.